<sighs> fried chicken. That is one thing that you probably miss if you're doing a low carb or if you can't have breading or gluten intolerant or you're allergic to gluten or you're just trying to stay away from it. Whatever the case, I've got the remedy and it comes in the flavor of pork rinds. Yeah, I know it sounds crazy, but it is absolutely delicious. It is crispy. It will give you the satisfaction that you so desire from fried chicken without the breading, without the flour. It's gonna be zero carb and it's gonna be gluten-free and it's gonna be juicy and delicious. But we're also gonna take a step further and get you a breakfast. You probably also miss potato pancakes or hash browns or home fries, whatever it is that you're probably missing that potato in your mouth. We're gonna give you some tips on how to use pork rinds to make turnip hash browns. And surprise, they're fantastic. For the turnip hash browns, cut off the rude end and then cut this little knobby end off the other side. And then you're just gonna peel them. Peel this outer skin off. I wouldn't even call it a skin really, but it's kind of a skin, whatever. And then just cut them in half the long way so they fit into the food processor. Or if you're using a box grater, doesn't matter, just use a box grater and shred them up. Carefully put them into your food processor. Now we're just gonna take a couple of eggs. And a pinch of salt. If you're just making regular scrambled eggs, it's always great to add just a pinch of salt to your eggs and let them sit for about 10 minutes and let that salt just to kind of absorb into the egg. Helps to enhance that flavor. Okay, now we're gonna take our hash browns and dump them into our egg mix. Okay, now we're gonna wipe out our food processor and use it again. All right, go ahead and just mix this up with your egg. Add your pork rinds. I don't know if we'll need this much, but once they grind up, there's not gonna be much in there. And then that's what you got. You got some delicious salty crumblies, just like breadcrumbs, but uh, zero carb, gluten-free. Dump your crumblies. Now, this is gonna add a really nice layer of crunch, but it's also gonna add our sodium. Look at how the pork rinds are just soaking up the liquid. And now we just basically wanna make little pancakes out of them. And then we're gonna go hit them in the cast iron skillet with some butter. Add some butter, about a tablespoon. Now I'd always recommend using a cast iron skillet for hash browns. If you have a griddle, even better. Another thing that is great is a fish spatula. Just to get those crispy bits, scrape them up. You want a fish spatula, a metal one. These are great. Just kind of make a little pancake. Actually, you know what we could do is we could smash them into the pan. Let's just put a little balls in there. Oh yeah. Hope you can hear that sizzle. So you can see my two turnips, pork rinds made in the two eggs, made four hash brown balls. Once we press them down. Now, if you wanna add bacon to this mix, oh my, that sounds quite lovely actually. See the butter starting to brown, that's great stuff. Fresh cracked pep. Now, I really love using turnip all the, quite often actually. We use turnip probably once a week and just by itself is great. But the addition of the pork rinds and the egg for this breakfast, <laughs> pork rinds are gonna add that crispiness level that is really difficult to get with root vegetables. Let's give them a little flip. All right, we got a little, little toastiness happening. I'm okay with that. Now, if your stove is 30 years old like mine, you might want to rotate your pan so things cook a little more evenly. All right, we're looking good, I think. Okay, let's go get an egg, because you got to have a sunny side up egg with your hash browns. At this point, I think we are done. Do we need more butter for the egg? Just a little bit, I think. Beautiful. Now you do scrambled eggs, but you just, I think you want a runny egg for this, you know? Move the egg around your pan. There we go. Louisiana hot sauce on mine. Oh yeah, add that vinegary pop. Now it's time to test. You gotta get a bite of the crispiness, the runny egg, the hot sauce. Cheers. Mmm, wow. Okay, if you are doing some sort of low carb diet, keto, whatever, and you miss the, the sensation of potatoes, this is a very close second. I believe will satisfy that urge to have a potato pancake or potato hash browns, things like that. It's definitely not the same. These are absolutely delicious and extremely low carb. I think there's like five grams total probably on this plate, but yeah, the hot sauce adds that vinegary acidic flavor. You got the savoriness from the egg and the yolk and you've got, you know, the crispiness. It's delicious. 
I recommend, I highly recommend this. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep eating this. Now, I would love to hear from you uh, how you would, would, would change this. Maybe you'd add onion, maybe you'd add some cheese. Yeah, tell me in the comments what you would do to make this your own. Mm, so good. Now, you probably came here for fried chicken. Just dump out all of your breadcrumb. If you have any big chunks of pork rind, go ahead and move those to the side. We don't want to add any giant chunks. Now, if you've got the time, I would recommend taking your chicken breast or chicken thighs, whichever you're going to use, and letting them sit overnight in buttermilk. You can add whatever seasonings you like. I definitely like smoked paprika. I think the smoked paprika and the buttermilk marinade for, for fried chicken is just a perfect combination. We're gonna add a little salt, whisk up them eggs, some heavy cream, mix that up with your egg mixture. It should kind of look like eggnog. Now for our seasoning. Onion powder, probably a quarter teaspoon. Smoked paprika, like I mentioned that smoked paprika. White pepper, garlic powder, and some oregano, quarter teaspoon. You may have noticed I didn't put salt in there. That's because I'm gonna salt the chicken directly. Now, if you're frying chicken breasts and you're not cutting them in half the long ways, then I recommend you start doing that because people complain about chicken breasts being dry when they get when they get fried chicken and when it's fried chicken, you want the opposite of dry. So cut them in half because you're overcooking. That's all, that's all there is to it. Let's just take in our little rub, just pat it into the chicken. Oh, and make sure you pat your chicken dry first too. We're gonna start by taking our chicken breast, giving it a little breading and then give it a dip. Whoa, look at that. That by itself is gonna be awesome. That is looking amazing. You want those crusties. Oh, now another tip. Let this rest. Let the pork rinds soak in to the chicken. A couple of things that I want you to have on hand. I want you to have a rack and then a little pan to set the rack over or a plate, whatever you wanna do. Just have that ready. You wanna have your salt ready because we do wanna salt our chicken after we pull it out. Meat thermometer, I'm just doing a shallow fry. We're looking at 350 degree oil right now. So we're gonna go ahead and place our chicken in. Set it away from you so that you don't splash yourself with hot ass oil. And now the easy part, we just let it fry up. That's it. And like I said, you don't want your chicken breast to be huge. So if they are huge, Put them, in a, put them in a plastic bag and hammer them down. Use a wine bottle, a beer bottle, a hammer, whatever you want to do, flatten them out, or just simply cut them in half the long ways. It already smells phenomenal. Pork rind fried chicken. All right, let's give them a turn. It's been about four minutes. Woo. Check under the hood, wow. Carefully out of the oil, set it on our rack to rest. Give it a little seasoning on the top, and we're good to go. The moment of truth. It's super crispy, beautifully golden brown, amazing looking. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I did steal a piece of breading already. And let me tell you, you may never go back to regular fried chicken, glutened up, full of carbs, fried chicken ever again. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, so juicy. Yeah. That is crazy town. I pulled it out at 165. Moment of truth, how's it taste? The first bite's just gonna be no sauce or anything like that, just how it came out of the frying pan. Boom. Beautiful. I am blown away. Now, I've never done this before. This was just a total on the whim idea, and whoa. If you do this, you will never make glutened up, carved up fried chicken ever again. This will blow your friggin' mind. Oh my gosh, is that good. Unless I have a bite with some hot sauce. Gonna use some Louisiana hot sauce again. Now you can use whatever kind of sauce you want. Chick-fil-A sauce, whatever you wanna do. Cheers. This, mm, wow, okay. If you're doing a low carb or gluten-free diet, use pork rinds. Okay, pork rinds to fry things in or to just add a little crunch to or to just add an additional zero carb and gluten-free pop to. They are wonderful and this fried chicken especially, whew, do it. Yeah, absolutely do it. So as always, I appreciate you. See you next time. This black and white striped burger hoodie. Now these letters are on there. They're like vinyl. This thing, this, this hoodie that I'm wearing, is honestly like a year and a half old and washing it, drying it, whatever, no shrinkage.
None. And it's fantastic. You can get it at the Bierger store, bierger.com.